<laughs> hey, sex beast, it's a BG. It is 1 o'clock on Thursday, and this is going to be our campfire for this week, and it is top five. Uh, okay, so this is top five cross-training exercises that I believe everybody should be doing. So, okay, first off, we're going to go ahead and define what cross-training is, okay? Now, I, I looked it up on the Google, and I'll put it up right here. Uh, the okay cross training is the action or practice of training or being trained in more than one role or skill uh, the second one is the one that's a little bit more pertinent and that is uh, the action or practice of engaging in two or more sports or types of exercise in order to improve fitness or performance in one's main sport or athletic activity which would be like ballet so does that mean standing on a BOSU ball doing grand ranajan no because it's doing the exact same thing that you're already going to be doing on stage, okay? Stick with me on this. So that means doing something that does not look like ballet to get stronger, okay? Now, let's go ahead and, let's go ahead and dive in with, with what I already think. So, number five. Actually, ooh, whiteboard. Makes me all official. Ugh. Number five. Here we go. Number five. Doop, deadlift. Huh? The deadlift? What is the deadlift? <laughs> deadlift is a barbell on the ground, and you're picking it up and just standing up. It is the best way to load the spine uh, and the whole body, and just your whole body just gets stronger. It's a, it's a little bit uh, easier of a lift to figure out. I, I honestly feel like people should learn how to do deadlifts first before they start doing squats, but I digress. Either way. Uh, and then the next thing you could also do on top of that, once you're doing, once you're getting strong with deadlifts and you're getting the whole body involved, then you can step into the next one, which is Romanian deadlifts, which are. Yeah, I'll write this down as well. So let's do subreddit. <laughs> Just kidding. Romanian deadlifts. Okay. And they look like this. So the goal is, is that um, the Romanian deadlift more. Uh, seems more like what you'd be doing if you're doing uh compre de vent or if you're doing ponches and i feel like it's especially when especially girls and when they have to stand on their leg for one, for a long period of time being able to activate all those muscles in the back of the legs is really going to help you to be able to be nice and strong especially when you start doing lots of point when you're doing uh partnering and all that kind of stuff now here here's actually the segue into the next exercise that i think is the most important thing and this is getting a really bad rap right now and i don't know why number four is Plank. When in doubt, plank it out. Why? Let's, let's be honest here. Okay, so when you're in plank, yes, it's not the way that your body is you're meant to be standing up and down. But if you're able to provide some type of resistance this way and keep this nice and straight, what are you going to be doing when you're doing your pirouettes? Or being partnered, you know? <laughs> and not only that, how stable does it help you to, like, how how stable does it make a guy when he's got a partner or a girl? I think planks are, are one of the best things you can do. Um, you, you don't need to see a video of that, do you? I didn't think so. You know what a plank is. And you can do them on your hands. You can do them on your elbows. And then there's a couple other ones you can also add in as well. Uh, shoulder taps where, well, I'll try to demonstrate. So you're here. Sorry. <laughs> so you're here. So you're in a plank and then you're, you're on, on your hands and you're bring your hands up and tap your shoulders. Uh, there's also the Davies, which I think we, I'll, I'll see if I can find a video here. There we go. This is the Davies, and you're walking back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And it, it's just kind of testing the body and keeping it all rigid, but at the same time, you're, you're shifting your weight. So uh, and then the other thing is side plank. You know, everybody knows what a side plank is. You're just like that. Yeah, obviously, I can't do a plank on my couch. Um, I'll try next time. But, yeah, so I'm not going to add all those extra ones in. Now, here's another thing. Okay, third one. Third exercise that everybody should be doing. Box jumps. Huh? Why? Kitty, right now, really? You, you have the nerve. The nerve. She's trying to she's trying to interject and doesn't think that uh, box jumps are important. But then again, she's the one that jumps up on top of my TV and then jumps up there and walking around like Batman. Anyway, so box jumps. Let me write it down. <laughs> box jumps. Now why, why box jumps? Let's 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 talk about this. Okay, so if you're completely turned out and you're doing challenge mall, on your cut, royale, on your cease, all that kind of stuff, and you have to just jump straight up and down, but you really only have a demi plie to be able to jump from, 
okay, uh, which is good, and there's plenty of people that can get like a two-foot vertical doing that. I've seen it. But if you aren't able to gather all of those, that energy to be able to get a really big jump like Grand Allegro, um, using a box jump here uh, will be able to allow you to get all that extra force from behind, from your posterior chain to get you up in the air. And no, it's not, it's not meant to be pretty. It's meant to be, you know, it's meant to be a, a, an accessory. It's, supposed to be, it's most, supposed to be an exercise to get you to learn how to explode. Okay. And I know that there's, especially with a lot of people that are very flexible and they have issues of trying to be able to uh, activate their muscles as quickly as possible. That's when a box jump would come in handy. Okay. Now, the other things that you can add along with that are uh, lunges and step ups. So you can just have, so like here, you know, step ups, whatever. And then you can have your lunges, same idea. Okay. But again, it's just strengthening that, one, that those knees, which will get you, uh, make you a little bit stronger when you're landing, but then also when you're taking off. Now, exercise number two, I don't know, can you guys see that? Can you see that? Okay, here we go. Exercise number two is, now this is more, this is more for guys, but I think that everybody can, can benefit from this. Overhead press, okay? But why? Well, let's be perfectly honest. And how many ballets does a guy have to pick, pick, pick a girl and put her overhead? Even if it's just a Gleason soda shock carry or a big press and that sort of thing. Everybody should be overhead pressing. Now, why should girls be overhead pressing? Overhead pressing allows the whole body, much like deadlifts, to be able to become really strong. And you don't necessarily, and it's really good for the shoulders. And girls actually have issues, especially when they're doing, and not, they don't have issues. But it always worries me sometimes when they don't strengthen their shoulders enough and they do all that crazy contemporary partnering, I'm worried about sometimes their, their shoulder coming out of joint. So if you overhead press, your shoulders get stronger, which means they're more stable, which means you're less likely to get injured. See, Aha, I have a plan, I have a plan. Now, here's another thing that you can also use as, uh, so overhead press, go, here it is, yay. Yay, overhead press, yippee. And you know, it, it doesn't have to be crazy amounts of weight. I think being able to do your sets of fives of, uh, of overhead press is, is wonderful. But if you're just gonna do um, dumbbells and you're doing like 30s on either side, that's perfectly reasonable as well. You know, like, the goal is that you wanna try and make your body strong. And however you're gonna do that, you can do that, okay? Now here's a subreddit for that. So we got overhead press. Here's another one that's actually really good for guys. Uh, but uh, again, women will also really enjoy this one as well. It is thrusters. Huh? What's a thruster? That is. T H R wow. I'm in quarantine for three days and I'd forget how to spell. What's up with that? <laughs> you I'll just start over. Sorry. <laughs> womp womp. Okay. T H R U S T E R S. Thrusters. What's well, a thruster? So this is actually gonna kinda segue into the next uh, next exercise that I was talking about. That that, that is the number one exercise. So thrusters are you you add you have dumbbells or barbell or whatever, and you take a really deep squatting position, and from the bottom of the squatting position, you push up with your legs, and that allows the, the weights to fly up in the air. And then you're slower lower down, and you do that over and over again. It just it builds all that explosiveness that we need as dancers. Okay, I personally I love thrusters. Um, they definitely get me blown up, and uh, I, I don't know. again. Number two, I haven't done them in a while. I might have to add them in next week. I'm, I'm feeling inspired. Okay, last set, best set. What is the most important one for dancers? I'll give you three guesses. No, not, no, not dumbbell curl. No, no, not, not Bosu ball round the jumps. Oh my gosh, you guys didn't even get it. Squats, come on, everyone should squat. Everyone, everyone and their mom should squat. Literally everyone and their mom. Everyone should just be squatting. And I do mean, specifically, the barbell squat. Well, I, I don't want to get big. You're not going to get big. You're not going to get big. You're just going to get strong. And it's going to be great. Like, let's just say, you're not, I'm not, I'm not asking people to do 405 pound squats, especially right now. You have to, but being able to do squat will make your whole body more stable, which will make you stronger across the board, which will help you also when, when you get at the end of, uh, like black swan pot of and you have to do 32 fuetes, you know that you're gonna have the strength to be able to get through that because of doing the squat. 
Now, so if you don't have access to a barbell, what other things could you do? Goblet squat. You can do the goblet squat. I love the goblet squat. Um, and you and you know if if you don't have if you don't have a goblet, so you can add weight to your body. You can also just do a body weight, that sort of thing. Now, um, let me let's let's talk a little bit. Let's talk about grand plié. I don't think people do enough grand pliés, but again, that's not that's not cross training. That's actual training. Okay. I think that this, if you actually look at squat, if you look at the barbell squat. And if you get us to stand up and then turn our legs out, you're already in grand plié. So this is actually strengthening those muscles in a more controlled setting, and you're not going. And that's going to make it easier for you to do a grand plié. Okay? So that's my list. That, that those are the five exercises that everybody should, should be doing, especially if you're a ballet dancer, uh, especially if you're a guy. But even even women, women should be uh, doing their barbell training. They should be training, and training is not the same as dancing. Okay? Dancing is that's your sport that's your athletic ability or your, your athletic activity and that's what you practice you know that's why you go to rehearsal and that's why you perform you know we have a weird uh, way of doing um, how we train because we don't train because of the way that we are have been training for years we don't train like football players in that they have a huge cross training season and then they have preseason which is when they're learning their skills again which is kind of like when you're going to rehearsal. And then they have games, okay? So what they do is they have their rehearsals uh, throughout the week, and then, they do their sh and then they do their performances, which is their games, once a week, that sort of thing. We, on the other hand, <laughs> because of the way that we train, because we will cross-train throughout whenever we're off, because we never really get time off, and then you, <laughs> and then you, and then you go to rehearsal for, for months, for a month and a half or so, maybe four weeks, and then you do seven performances, and you have to be exactly the same way. So I think that being able to have the strength and the base of strength to be able to get through all those rehearsals will keep you able to perform better. That's just my opinion. So I don't know. If you guys have any questions, if you guys think um, if you think I'm talking crazy, say it down in the comments. If you have questions about any of the exercises, say it down in the comments. Make sure to give me two thumbs up, but you know, I'll take... One. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I, I I hope this is informative, and I hope at least it's... I mean, again, it's my opinion, and you know what they say about opinions. I'm not going to say it on here. <laughs> Wash your hands, and get after it, sexy beast. Love you.